Well, today I thought I'd do a little bit about chronomen. You know, I've talked a lot on uh, Facebook and Instagram about chronomening out here in the Columbia. And I want to show everybody that today. It's just phenomenal. You know, I've been using a lot of times my pheasant tail nymphs, you know, all the purple, purple prints, the prints that would be deadly. But you wait till you see this fish on chronomens now, size 16, you know, teddies, red and blacks. I'm getting them on some uh, dusty olives. I've also got them on my light browns. But uh, you know, in these COVID times when I'm having a fish by myself, it's not easy, but I've tried to get you footage. So that's today. We take a sport fishing on the fly, Facebook style, or actually COVID style. <laughs> The nymph in a minute, but uh, 21st minute, you know, it's uh, 18 solid plus. I'll, be, I'll try to get a better pitch, but there's a the chromey there, or the, the black and red, the little teddy. There it is, there. I'll get a better pitch picture to put it on. Everybody's seen it, but that's all I'm using size 16, small, and I'm just letting it sit out in this, this calm water. You can see the whole water behind me, it's like a lake. It's really calm. There's a whole bunch of eddies on the river right now that are like this. Very calm like a lake. I'm just going to cast it out and let it sit, just like a water chronomen. Sure, the current takes it, so you got to pick it up and cast it once in a while. But uh, normally, I'll just cast out in this area here and wait for the fish to eat it. Well, let's get it set up see if we can get you another Okay, there's another in that soft water. So you see behind me how soft that water is. It's really, really calm. And the fly, you know, you can give it a little motion. They like it a little motion once in a while, but again, it's just like chronomet. Just tweak it once in a while, make sure it's in that soft water. The seams kind of push all the food together, and you're going you're gonna to get fish like this. Here's another dandy, and the chronomet is just barely, barely in his mouth. Oh, bullet. There he is there. Another nice fish. Gorgeous. Off he goes. Wow. Again, all in that soft water. Now I'm gonna hit uh, I'm gonna hit a couple of holes today. This one's not the best, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot more current in this hole than I like. But there it is again. That was just in the corner of his lip. He spit it right when I got him in the net. And I've lost a couple already. And you know, these curved hooks are tough to hook up fish. Probably should have tied them on a little different hook, but they seem to be effective, so. I'm going to work this one for a bit longer. You know, the seams are set up pretty good. But the ideal is when you've got current on one side, current on the other, pushing everything in the middle. You just let that fly sink down. And again, it's a huge advantage to have a boat. Like, for this kind of fishing, you need a boat because you have to be out in the back eddies and you have to be casting all the time. You know, it's too tough from shore, too long to cast. You can't target it right. So, if you don't have a boat, ignore this video because you need a boat to actually fish this way. Sorry about that. So I think there's a big reason why the uh, why the midges or chronomans are so effective. Obviously big hatches right now, you know, size 16 to 18 midges are everywhere. But also there's a lot of winter algae in the water. A lot of guys call it the snot and the, or the paper, you know, there's stuff floating in the water. And when I'm using a nymph or even buggers and, and bigger flies, uh, stone flies, they get papered up. They get covered by that winter algae and it's not good. Whereas the chronomans, with that UV coating, that that's paper and the winter algae just seems to slide right over it. I don't, every time I bring my hook in, it's clean. And I think that's another reason. It's sitting static and it doesn't get all mucked up. So here's how I'm set up. Since I have to reset my indicator, I just lost one. So there's my, there's my fly, as I said. Any little size 16 crony right now is working pretty good. Mainly red and blacks. I've got about, three feet to my swivel. So just a normal swivel. 
you know, any swivel will work. Just silver is good. And then I'm going to peg it. So normally I go six feet, seven, about seven and a half to eight feet. I peg it about eight feet, always to start. And then I've got room to move. I usually vary between six and ten feet for depth. Normally eight is my target. And that's it. That's it for your setup. Cast it out there. Look for those soft seams where the flow is almost stopped. And wait for that fish to happen. Oh. <laughs> so think about it with economy too. Is you're going to catch all size fish. I've caught fish, you know, up to 26 inches, and I've caught them as small as this little guy. Oh, look at there's the crony out already. This little guy, little guy like that. You know, little. Uh, there he goes. I had them and just spit it. So they're not. See what I'm noticing today. You know, I've already caught about five fish, and been out here for about a half an hour. It's it's actually pretty good action, but I'm getting a lot of false hits on the teddy today. You know, this black and red was a killer a couple of days ago they weren't refusing it my indicator was going down hard now i'm getting you know that guy was a real subtle take too so when they're doing that probably a good idea for me is to change i i know they're small you know size 16 size 18 black mid just coming off maybe this one's a little too aggressive with the with the red or the white bead so when i go to my next hole i might change it over and uh yeah, I might try one that's uh, with a little, you know, black nickel bead with some gills on it. Those are always effective. But they're still hitting it, so I'll keep using it for a bit. You know what we're going to do, too? You know what we'll do right now? You know, we haven't done this ever on Facebook. Let's go to the bench. Actually, I'm going to throw in a bench segment. Let's go to the bench. I think people have seen it on TV already, but let's go to the bench and tie you up the teddy. How's about that? So today on the bench, I want to tie you up the teddy. Now, the teddy is a chronomid pattern. And we named it after Ted McDonald, a good friend of ours. It's all he uses in every various size. He does not use another chronomen. So make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a size 14 curved pupa, some 6 aught black nano silk for the thread, a 2.4 millimeter white bead for the bead, some 6 aught black nano silk for the body, some red holographic flashaboo for the rib, and some UV clear finish for the coating. So to start the fly off, I've got my small size 14 hook, I've put the bead right to the front and I've pinched the barb. A lot of times you can't get the bead on unless you pinch the barb. And I prefer the 6 aught nano silk, it lays really flat, but I want to build up the body. So that's why I prefer a little bit thicker thread. Go about halfway down the hook, take your red flashaboo and just tie it in. It's a very easy tie. And again, I just like to tie it right down and go about halfway down your hook, hook bend. Halfway down the hook bend, keep it thin at the back, and then wrap forward. Now taper the body. So as I'm wrapping it up, I'm actually using material, and I'm just going to put a slight taper on the fly. So you see that? I'm just going to kind of build up a little bit more here towards the, towards the bead. Taper it up. So once you have a nice little tapered body, we're going to take about, you know, six, six to seven turns up the body to rip the fly. So just keep winding that forward. And, you know, make sure you leave a little bit of black spacing in between. So, you know, about five or six wraps. Get right up to the outlet. Take a few to seal it in. And then we're just going to tie off right there. Now what we'll do is we'll just build up a little bit of a thorax. Some people will add a different color on the thorax, but I prefer the black. And I want it just flush right with that bead. So I'm just going to build it up so it's about the size of the bead, right at the head end. It builds a nice little black thorax. And then we're going to whip finish. Just a few whips. So now you've got a nice tapered body. Just a small fly. Now, to finish it off, I'm just going to loosen things off so we can turn it a bit. And then what we'll do is take our UV clear coat and we're going to coat the whole thing. So we'll take this and start coating the entire fly. And the best way is even uh, you can use your scissors or a bodkin, you know, whatever's handier. I just use the scissors because it's easy to move it around. Tighten this up. And just start moving it around so you can 
move the clear coat all around the fly. Just make sure you get it all back because you're really, you're putting that protective coating on it too. It protects that flashaboo from cracking. And once you get it nicely tapered, you hit it with the UV light. So hit it with that UV light and seal it all together. And there it is, finished teddy. It'll be nice and sealed with a nice UV coating to protect the flashable. So there it is, the finished teddy chronomid. You know, really all it is is a black and red snow cone. But of course, we like to name our flies, so we call it the teddy. You know, one big tip for everybody is as it progresses, I always start small in the spring, size 18 and 20. I know people don't like to use them, but start small and every couple weeks I progress. So 14, 12, 10, and by the summer using big bombers. But you gotta give this a try, it's a great little pattern. Got a couple of more small ones, and uh, you know, we did all right. Got a couple of decent sized, few little small guys. I've got two more holes I'm gonna hit to finish off the day, and I know this one hole that I'm gonna finish in has some pretty big fish. So, you know what? I've got enough small guys. The flow isn't perfect here today, it's not bad, but it's just got a little too much of a current for me. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna head downstream. Let's get down to those next uh, couple of holes because. With this kind of weather, kind of overcast, warm, like it's really warming up, could get really good. Okay, well, I got to the other spot here. It's, the flow's changed. It's actually a lot bigger than me. I think they've got some, uh, some water on the dam, but I always got bigger fish in here. These big fish love to sit. Oh, there he is there. That's what I'm talking Love to sit in this, you know, in this big water, but there's actually kind of a mini lake in the middle of it that I'm fishing right over here. But, uh, geez, three days ago, this was like a lake. Now this current's come up quite a bit. Look at this. Look at that. 24 inch depth, 20, 20 plus incher. Look at how beautiful that is. Chrome bullet. There it goes. You know, like I said, this spot, the water's really come up. It's, uh, it's only a little lake back in here, so I'm gonna work it down here. It's not as calm as I'd like it. You know, normally I'd probably switch over to a, to a Prince Nymph in this faster water, but it's decent through here. I can work the climb and that guy liked it, so. And there's another. Oh, what a great day. You know, it's not, it's not steady action. I would say I'm catching a fish every five to 10 minutes. It's, uh, you know, three or four pickups and go. But it's, you know, it's decent. It's a great way to catch fish in a river. If you've never, you know, midge fished in a river or coronament in a river, especially big rivers and these big holes, it, as you can see, it can be just deadly. Chrome bullet. Look at that. Just beautiful. <laughs> 22, 20 inches. There it goes. <laughs> uh, you know what? I gotta keep fishing. I hope uh, if I get a big one, I'll film it again. But I hope everybody enjoyed the day. Uh, it's just trying to show you different techniques. You know, it's what we got in COVID right now. It's, it's all I can do. I can go out here. Uh, please let me know if you, if you like the videos. You want me to keep trying to produce a few for everybody once in a while um, of course if you don't well don't comment because I don't want to know uh, no just kidding let me know and I hope everybody enjoyed it so you know you learned a lot. I hope everybody learned a little bit about Karan in big holes big rivers it works midging in rivers whether you've got really small rivers or big rivers like this with big holes it's a very very effective technique especially when the fish are up feeding so don't ignore it so take care conserve waters We'll see you next time when I take you sport fishing COVID stuff. 
to watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.